All right, gang. So hopefully your final quiz went uh, successfully for you. I hope you had a good time uh, delving into those different quizzes. And hopefully you found on the Mount Vernon website the uh, opportunity to see the number of different quizzes that are available there on the uh, different aspects of George Washington's life. Uh, great job by Mount Vernon putting those together. Um, I'm always fascinated by the uh, different myths that exist of Washington, especially his teeth, the fact they were not wooden, right? Ivory made out of human teeth, right, from his slaves, um, partially. Uh, but he, he uh, just struggled with his dental issues, and it was always a source of discomfort. And you can see it in a number of the different paintings that exist, especially the Gilbert Stewart painting. That's a, uh, the dollar bill. Um, that is a, a Washington who is in great discomfort with, with his dentures. And it's interesting to read the correspondence that exists between Washington and uh, the various doctors in the Philadelphia area where he's putting these orders in and trying to explain some of the discomfort he's feeling with his, uh, with his own uh, teeth and, and, and denture issues, if you will, right? So Washington finishes up his presidency, uh, and he does so by, um, in true sort of Washingtonian fashion, a very um, humble uh, farewell address. He doesn't hold this massive event where he calls together both houses of Congress and dramatically delivers this address. He um, actually does so uh, by printing his farewell address in a newspaper. And partially the reason why he prints it in the newspaper is that he wants it published so it can't go back on it. Uh, he doesn't want to be talked into another uh, term because he could have easily have been talked into another term and would have probably won very convincingly. I don't know that he would have gotten all the electoral college votes by his third term because there was enough of a division that was starting to arise between the different political parties, but he would have overwhelmingly won. So this was sort of his way of saying, I've had enough and I'm putting it in writing and nobody can change my mind now. And to a certain extent, he didn't tell anybody it was coming. So all of a sudden it just appears in the newspaper one day. So it was his way of saying, you know, uh, we're, we're not turning, uh, turning back from this in any form or fashion, right? Um, and so uh, the farewell address um, effectively limits the presidential term of office to two terms, right? And part of the reason why is that um, he was fearful that if he had died in office, um, uh, that then that would set this precedent that you could serve as many terms as you wanted and also almost becomes a lifetime appointment. And in fact, this is, this is not far from what Alexander Hamilton had uh, talked about doing in the Constitutional Convention when he proposed his, his plan of government, which looked a heck of a lot like the uh, British monarchy, which is a bit ironic, if you will, right? And so Washington wanted to be able to, while he was of still clear mind and judgment, show that you could have this peaceful transfer of power from one person to another, right? The address is in the form of a public letter. It's published in the American Daily Advertiser, um, dated September 19th, 1796. Um, and it's interesting because there's a couple drafts that have been written neither by Washington. The first one was done um, by uh, James Madison. And this was a, uh, a farewell address that Washington was drafting after his first term in office because he wanted to go out after his first term but was talked into it, right? And so he sort of shelves that, puts it in a drawer and brings it out during his second term. And Alexander Hamilton then conducts the rewrite of, of what really becomes uh, the, inaug oh, I'm sorry, the uh, farewell address that we see um, published in the, the American Daily Advertiser. Uh, Washington is not completely hands off with it. He does have uh, final edits on it, um, and we see that as well. Okay, um, so the content. And I'm gonna I'm gonna post actually, and I haven't done much of, of requiring or or posting for you a lot of reading, but I will post and be. In, I'm gonna post two things. One, the entirety of the farewell address, so that you could read this primary source document, right? And then I'm gonna post um, uh, a link to a book written by John Avalon. And John Avalon uh, wrote um, the, uh, the farewell address and, and sort of captures this portrait of its relevance in today's uh, current events. And it really is uh, pretty um, powerful to see just how relevant it is to today, right? Um, so the first thing he does is he sort of explains himself to the American people. Here's why I didn't seek a third term. And here's why I didn't retire after my first term, right? So, so he's sort of laying out his case, if you will. Um, and then he goes on to talk about this idea of um, his, it was his, his decision to, to do this and, and not, no other decision could be made about that, right? And then he wants to sort of leave with this reiteration of the struggle that they've all faced within the war for independence and 
um, remind that in a, in a country in the, in the late 1790s that is becoming more and more divided by political party, the, the, uh, the importance of union that bonded all Americans, right? Sound like a pretty relevant uh, thing that needs to be said today, right? So we, we see that in the 1790s, okay? Um, he cautions, and this is kind of what his farewell address really is. It's a series of cautions, um, warnings to the nation. And they're so, they're so um, prescient, if you will, of, of what really does wind up happening, right? And the one thing he fears is regionalization, right? North versus South, right? He warns of that. He warns of this growing divide between an industrial North and an agricultural South. Uh, the name of American must always exalt the just pride of patriotism more than any appellation derived from local discriminations, okay? He warns of, of partisanship and political parties. Now, he, ideologically, he aligned himself with the Federalist Party, but he would never identify with a political party because he warned against them. So the rise of this two-party system that occurs during Washington's term of office was really, I guess, sort of a natural formation of the government. Uh, but the rise of the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans are nothing that Washington uh, ever wanted to see. And then he, he warns of the risk of foreign entanglements. Um, he did well to keep the United States out of any type of foreign entanglement within the French Revolution. You know, it was too early for this young nation to become involved in that, okay? And he said that because um, Louis XVI had his head removed, that that sort of effectively ended any and all um, alliances to treaties because the king was no longer around, okay? Um, and then he speaks to this vulnerability uh, of, of this new nation and, and that if we, if we don't stick together, uh, as Benjamin Franklin famously said, we must all surely hang together, right? But he, he talks about how this republic that has been established by the United States is very fragile indeed, and that there's a need for um, all Americans to take great responsibility in, in keeping it together, right? Um, so his farewell address is, is so relevant to today and it's such a um, sort of um, perfect way for him to make his uh, farewell on the public stage. So what I've done is I'm going to go ahead and check out the links. One will be um, the, uh, a link to the entire farewell address um, as Washington wrote it. The second will be a link to the Avalon book that I referred to. And then the third, and I'm sort of teasing my, my class that I'm, I'm conducting in the second session of the summer here is uh, a link to the cast of Hamilton is performing at the White House. Um, and um, they are performing the song One Last Time. And One Last Time tells the story through song of Washington wanting to leave the presidency. And Lin-Manuel Miranda, the, the show's creator, actually takes a uh, transcript from the farewell address and implements it into the song. And what's um, unique about this performance is that it's done in the East Room of the White House at the time when uh, Barack Obama's second term of office was coming to an end. So as um, President Obama is thinking about um, his own farewell address, right, his staff is thinking about uh, the end of this presidency. Um, there's this cast invoking the name of George Washington and the farewell address. So I've, I've um, posted that for you as well. So go ahead and, and enjoy those three links and we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, the death of George Washington.